Anna, a very good morning to you. Welcome to Natasha Makes. Yes, it's a Wednesday. Pinch yourself. We're live. Yes, don't pinch yourself because that'll hurt. Uh, but we are live. Uh, today is a very exciting day because, well, for two reasons. Firstly, it is block of the month. Yay! This is block two of our block of the month. Second, actually, three reasons. Secondly, um, Jane, this now is the, I feel we should have a fanfare or something. <laughs> this is now Jane's slot. Every week, 10 o'clock, Jane Alcock's quilting hour is hit. Well, it might be more than an hour. Might Depends be. how much we chat. Mm. Who knows? Who knows? Um, so that is the situation. That is where we're at, uh, which is going to be absolutely fantastic. So you know you have got a regular destination quilting hour, and that is what Jane is best at. That is what she specializes in. So that is what we have given her to do, which is very exciting. And we nearly have all the shows planned up to Christmas. Yeah, More or less, yeah. We're yeah. getting there, which is pretty exciting slash slightly unheard of for us. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> it's not lastminute.com here at all. Uh, so that is super, super, super exciting with lots of beautiful quilting projects for you. So if quilting is your thing, or maybe you're just dipping your toe and thinking that this is um, where you'd like to specialise, maybe you'd just like to have a little go. What we've offered you. Um, is obviously this is the the quilt for the block of the month and this is what we are we're going to do this one aren't we today yeah yeah uh, so that is this month's block you should have already had your parcel by now if you've subscribed but third exciting thing oh, I can count on everything this morning <laughs> it's very good uh, third exciting thing is that I've got to remember what I was going to say now <gasps> We're starting, slowly, slowly, gently, gently, to go digital, okay? When we first started, we asked, we asked you lot um, if you wanted your patterns as paper or as PDFs. And resoundingly, it was you wanted paper patterns. So that's what we did. That's what, that's what we've always done. That's what we've done for the last nine months. But now we've seen that lots of you are asking a lovely lady in Texas say, yay, from across the bond, I can buy Natasha Make Stuff. Yeah, you can. You absolutely can. So when you see um, a pattern that has a little turquoise circle with an arrow on a straight line, like that, that, that is the download sign. And that means that there is a downloadable format for that. So we're starting, we've done block one, we've done block two now as downloadable PDFs for you. Please remember that it is just for you, for your eyes only. Please don't share it with other people. We are only a tiny business. Um, so if you start sharing it out with everyone and it's only you that's bought it, that's not fair. It is copywritten to us. Um, so please, if you buy it, it is just for you. If you make and sell and you have handmade it, that's fine. But please do not pass on that, that, that. We're trusting you, basically. We're trusting you. But if we see lots of copies of it out there, we'll just stop it. Um, oh, that sounded very school mum, yes. didn't it? <laughs> I scared oh, mum. Oh, got my mum head on then for a minute. Sorry about that, but you know, got to be said. Uh, right, so let's just show. We have got, so new ones that we have started. We well, obviously, it's going to take us a while to go back through the many, many, many patterns. Um, and that's, so Josh is on board to, to do all of that. But going forward, new patterns, we will get around to putting a digital upload of so case in point our nesting tidy there is a third side a larger size but it's still on my sewing machine um, and look they nest they're so cute so that pattern which we the first time we bought this to wear there we go nesting tidy there it is you can either get paper or you can get it as a pdf download yay which means you could do this this afternoon once you finish your block of the month also things that you have asked for that we have listened to, you asked for Gemma's um, sanitar uh, not sanitary, sanitizing bottle. You said, well, what if we have other bottle sizes? What are we to do? She's done this, again, available as a PDF download. So this is now how to create your own pattern that will create this. Now, Margaret had a question. She said, but the template at the front, oh, it's on the other one. Uh, template B doesn't look right. It looks too small for template A. Template B is the front bit, so should be smaller. The pattern is correct. 
okay just so that you know try making it um, and you'll see that it's all okay it's all okay I know it looks funny but it is all I promise you I made it from that pattern it's all perfect don't worry about that but this shows you if you've got other other is there another sanitizer <laughs> Other than, seams. other than seams other than seams i mean no. I, I don't know not one that not smells this, nice this, yeah. it does smell great doesn't it it does and it's got vitamin b oil in it you know all that kind of stuff so they are all on the website www.natashamakes.com and you have asked for the block of the month to also be digitally downloadable and now it is also i'm just rushing to get this because i know that this is jane's show not mine we said yesterday we would put together a bundle of earthy tones earthy furry tones um, because for those of you that might be trying to do the dog in different colors that we had yesterday on yesterday's show so let me show you the earthy tones three of these are batiks and we popped in one plane because it was just the leap between that it was the missing link so we've popped those on so if you're after actually they're just really handy to have as neutrals aren't they yeah they make you, great background colors they do make great background colors and they're really earthy and autumnal and gorgeous and on a really special price of 17.99 for four half meters Ooh! remember with those salt batiks when they are gone they are gone talking of salt batiks Jane, I am really pleased that you are on board with this because what happens is we get an order, we unload it. Sometimes it ends up fully in the warehouse and great. Other times bits get left behind and happy accidents happen. Not in like a health and safety, you know, no, fill out the accident over. book type thing. None of that. But just in terms of colours accidentally get put together. And that's what happened in the hall, wasn't it? Yes. There was a stack of salt batiks, and I don't know why they hadn't been put, because I had a day where I blitzed everything and put it oh, in colour order. It was beautiful. Colour and number order. I mean, it was, mm. it was the dream. I had a moment where I felt quite smug. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, because it's unusual. There was, one, there was one bay in the warehouse, and I was like, ah. Oh. Um, yeah. So, and this happened. Ooh, now normally this colour I've matched with William Morris and all kind of that. Never in a month of Sundays did I ever think to put it with golds and yellows. Well, that's why I've got Jane, because Jane did. She took one look and went, well, what you need to do is something particularly gorgeous like this. And here's the thing. If you have subscribed to the block of the month, this is today's block. This is sashing and you've got your cushion so all you need to do is get your block of the month instructions and that's it then with what you have left over I love that you've done this I love that we've got look we've got a strip of each color there and it's an envelope back cushion with a nice piece is that about binding just binding yeah, just there? Bound on, yeah just just binding just a bit of binding just so, whilst this is the block, because quilting is a clever malarkey, that is also the block. Doesn't it look different in there? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a different centre. Yeah. But it's, it's a quarter square triangle, and we've done that in the previous block of the month, and we'll be doing it again in this next block of the month. I think it's next time's block of the month. So, quarter square triangles are straightforward, and I, I'll show you that later. So the question is, and this is just a little aside, are you happy to tackle this cushion with these instructions or do you want Jane to do an entire instruction set that show you how to do the measurements for all of this and the whole shebang? That's the question. Just pop it down on here and, uh, and then I'll just say a quick hello to everybody and then I will hand over to Jane. Is that going to be in your way if I put it there? I don't think so. Are you sure? Yeah, no, I don't that's want fine. to clutter up. I want to clutter up. Um, we have got Sean and Sue and uh, Leslie and Mary and Jan and Alison. Hello, hello, and Lisa and Helen. Good morning. It's just good morning, everyone. Everyone, good morning. Good morning. And Heather and Raya and Karen and Claire, who cannot wait. Claire's been designing her own stuff. It looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. And uh, Margaret, good morning to you as well. And Joanna, hello, hello. And Jen uh, and Wendy and Anne. Um, Anne's very excited. 
uh, which is great. And Carol, good morning, good morning. And Susan and Francis. Um, and Karen says, good morning, Tash and Jane. Ready for some midweek magic? Welcome on board, Jane. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I think we've got the new show name. <laughs> Jane's midweek magic. Uh, Belinda and Sue and Tracy and Sue and Linda and Anne and Diane and Carol and Sally. Good morning. And Susan, uh, she's just got a coffee, so she's good to go. Fiona and Jenny as well. Good morning, good morning and Heather uh, and Jim and June and oh I know what I meant to say the, which quilt are we doing next week do we are decide we doing, are we doing a Christmassy thing next week are we doing the advent calendars and the table runner or next week can we do that, that one yeah or were we going to do Catherine wheel Catherine wheel should we do Ca oh decisions decisions should we do Catherine Wheel next week mm -hmm. and then Christmas the week after? Yeah, let's do that. Oh, yeah. Have we got Catherine Wheel to show? This in the box. Do you want me to go get it? it? Yeah, go on. It probably needs a press. <laughs> what probably needs a press? Only said by a quilter. Uh, Viv's here and Mary's here and Geraldine is watching. Geraldine's got about 10 devices on the go so she can watch everybody all at once. Uh, it did make me giggle. And uh, Sonia, and her, she says good morning to, to Natasha and the makes team. The mate, uh, the mate's team this morning. Josh has been to the gym, hasn't he? Already. Oh he's been gosh, to the gym. That yeah, boy he's is done so on it. Hardcore. Now, you will know that. Well, you might not know, but if you do know me, then you'll know that I love peacock feathers. So when I saw this fabric, it was a must. Then didn't know what to do with it, and then Jane came. Oh, but look at the colours in there. This is next week's quilt. I'm going to show you the fabrics in it because it's beautiful really beautiful and i can do this look i have the technology uh, ooh. Oh, nice so i mean it was a rummage wasn't it it was a rummage and a where's my ah there we go um and look look at those blues and the greens i just loved it i mean i like peacock feathers as well but to me it looked like fireworks when i when because sometimes when you look at a bolt of fabric you don't always see what it is you see yeah the colors you see patterns. the impression and I was like, oh, that looks like fireworks. And Which so, hence the name Catherine Wheel. And I love how you've quilted it as well. Just beautiful. So this, it is a little sneaky peek, but because Jane is uber, uber, uber organised, and it's not too big, is it? It's no, it would make a nice tails play mat or a little lap quilt. You know, that, it's, that's a it's a sort on the of sofa. pattern, though, that if you want to make it bigger... It's just a repeat of the same block, so you can make it as big or as small as you want to. You could make just a cushion if you wanted. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I love that when you turn it around that way, hence the Catherine wheel. Yeah, it just looks different whichever way you go. And it's the sort of pattern as well that you could, if you wanted to, change the middle colour and that would make it look different again. It just It's one of those patterns that you can change it around. It's lovely. It's magical. Like. So we will have this quilt for you next Wednesday. And we will put together some other colourways as well for you. And we have all the instructions. They might even be digitally downloadable. Who Ooh. knows? Let's pop that on there. Oh, my teapot clank. Um, and I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to get my cup of tea. I'm going to get me a, my technology. And I'll see you in a minute. I'm only going over here so I can press buttons. Good morning. Ah, oh, good morning, Jane. It's exciting. <laughs> right, block of the month. Now then, it's got templates. I know some of you aren't happy about templates. Oh, template gate. But right, I have to put my hand up on this then, Jane, mm. because um, I have changed supplier of template plastic because um, you weren't happy with the last template plastic that we got. And so that's fine. Yeah, we've We got listened, we reacted. We've changed, and this is your favourite type of template I plastic. I love so easy. It is what it says. It's designed. It's <clears> designed for sewers, and it they make it as easy as possible. This template plastic is clear, nice and clear. It's got a rough side and a smooth side. The rough side is great because it's great for drawing on because it doesn't, you know, it doesn't rub off. If you do on the on the plain side, it'll rub off. But it also, this rough side, it's not rough rough, it's not like emery board or anything, but it, it, it holds onto your fabric, so it's not going to slide around, which makes it perfect, I think. 
you get two sheets in the pa in the pack. Now, it's the sort of thing you need in your stash, template plastic. Even if you're not a big fan of sewing patchwork with templates, although it comes in very handy for your EPP when you want to fussy cut, because of course you can see through it, so you can choose your little motifs when you've made your template. And also if you're doing lots of um, applique as well of the same thing. Yeah, if you've got, you know, a favourite flower shape, make it in your template plastic and then you've got it. I do um, initials got... for the kids. Yeah. Yeah. If Done. you do letters, yeah. you've got them then, haven't you? Yeah. And they're always there. Keep them in a box, you know, in your cupboard and you've got them. And template plastic is the sort of thing that doesn't take up a lot of room. It's an A4 size sheet. You get two uh, in a pack. You get two in the pack and it's there then and you'll think, oh yeah, I've got my template plastic, I'm fine with that. It's the sort of thing that it's just handy to have. So we've done, te we've we've done template plastic two ways mm. on the website. Now, if you did our block of the month, the last quilt, you and you've saved your templates, this is then they're the same. The same. It's exactly okay. the same because we're working on the same size blocks. We're working on a 12 inch block. It makes into a four inch, four and a half inch, four inch finished um, square. But if you want to get the new template plastic and if you want to get, because you were very specific about what pen to use as well, they are on order yeah. and will be here today, hopefully tomorrow latest. Um, we've got the fine lines. Yeah. So it's called a permanent marker, isn't it? It's yeah. a fine line permanent, but it's brilliant for working on template plastic because it doesn't smudge but and it's also because it's a permanent marker it's great for writing your labels for the back of your quilt as well slash school clothes yeah labeling yeah school clothes yeah we all need that don't we at the moment it's like <laughs> did you see everything has to be labeled doesn't it freddie came home the other day in a size six to seven top and he just looked like he'd been stuffed into it oh. and it came to his wrists i mean it just it was ridiculous and it so wasn't his jumper at all so i've manically spent the weekend relabeling all of his correct size clothes yes so it's got to be done and oh. if you've got parents that are in care homes as well they need to have their clothes labeled so you know it's not just for children They've my friend used them. to have to put the address and everything in case her granddad went a wandering yeah so that you know sort of please take care of this grandfather and return him home yeah type thing yeah um so. <laughs> Shalane says, morning, finish my first block and invoking the three foot rule. <laughs> Always works, Sean. don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. If you've enjoyed the process, that's the main thing. Don't worry. If anybody else criticises your piecing, <laughs> want to make their own. Yeah, they're no friend. They're no friend. What I will say with the template plastic is, you know, use it economically. You've got two straight edges here, a right angle, so line your edge of your plastic up with the edge of your pattern you know that's one that's two less cuts you've got to do there and just follow it round you'll notice that on here we've got the bold line is the actual shape and then we've got the seam allowance which is a slightly fainter line and it's got the edges cut off so that they nestle nicely when you put them together so it's it's just literally a case of taking your templates i would recommend that when you get hold of your pattern, you take that bit off, tape it to, down to your desk, and then it's not going to move around. Line your template plastic up on top, and use a ruler. You know, line your ruler up. You wouldn't want a great big long one like this, but you know, you, if you've even got you know your stationary set ruler. Oh, that, there's one on the on the rotating cutting mat. Just there there. Oh, excuse me a moment. Reach. Um, Susan says that she's got a creative grids ruler that does this. We did a show, didn't we, where we showed how to use your creative grid. Yes. As long as it comes out as a finished. It needs to be finished four inch, so four and a half before you join it together. There you go. Which creative grids will have all the information. So as on long there. as you do it that size, Susan, then absolutely go for yeah, it. Your creative grids ruler makes life so much easier. But I wanted this to be, you know, accessible for everybody because we can't all have creative grids rulers. Some of us, you know, are on a, a budget. It's one of those things to aspire to. But with the templates, you can use cereal box to make templates from. You just can't see through them. It's you can't a bit see hard, through it. it. Now, Helen says that some of her old template plus has got a brown colour. Oh, Ooh. that's pretty self some new ones. 
Has it gone a bit brittle? I don't know. It can, I think the old style can go a bit brittle. This and, uh, is nice, so it's nice and flexible. Beverly um, wants the uh, blah, 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 Catherine Wheel in pinks and purples. Right. So we can do that. We can have a look at that. Definitely. We can certainly see what we can Excuse sort there. Me. And Joanna said, did you say at some time that you were going to do a KF quilt kit? Um, yes, we did. I wanted to do some out of the book and then my supplier ran out of KF. <laughs> So very oh, dare then. I know, I know. So they are trying to get it direct from because normally um, the fabric would be printed in Korea. I think half of this is printed. Most fabric does come from Korea yeah. now, or, or that way, Sri Lanka, that neck of the woods, yeah. and then get shipped back to America, and then to get shipped across to Holland, and then across to us. Yeah. But now and our supplier is getting it direct from the mills, so it's skipping out the whole American leg of the journey which i think is quite sensible anyway to be honest but well, yeah, you know it saves a few air miles doesn't it so joanna yes do you want ones that are in the cave book or for example if i found a particularly gorgeous like pinky purple cave to then do the uh, catherine wheel in a pinky purple cave say for example would you be happy with that or should i just do both I'll see what I can do. Let's do it. It's not forgotten. It's just um, quantities just ain't there. So when you've cut your templates out, label them up. It wouldn't hurt to put on your label that it's a four and a half inch um, triangle. This is where you need a marker pen, isn't it? Sorry, Jane. I haven't well, the pencil, yet. this the sew line pencil works just as well. Just so that you've got. When you stick it into your folder or whatever you do, you know you've got a reference then about what size it is. Copy everything that's on the template sheet, really. You know, transfer all of that because it's, we're all very good at thinking, oh, yeah, I remember what size that is, but it doesn't always work that way. So you're going to need, we're making four of these blocks. This is the block, but we're going to need four of these. So you're going to need to have... 16 of the white triangle, which is triangle A. And you're going to need to have, and I'm sorry about this, but there's eight in each block, so you <laughs> <laughs> you're going to need 16 of, of B and 16 of C. I'm trying to remember which creative grid it was for anyone that <laughs> is, is anti. Uh, can you remember? Um, yeah, can you remember which one it was? I'm frantically trying to remember which one it was. Um, which one was it, Jane? I haven't got them here. I've moved. I've just moved all the crazy bits into the warehouse. Funny shaped one that's sort of like a long, long point, and it's got a pointy one. On the side. It could well be. And I tell you what, on the packet, it'll have. It's got this on the front yes, of the packet. Yes, it will. It will have that shape. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Let me have a look and see what I can find. So, you need to transfer in the pattern. I tell you to cut a four and a half inch wide strip. You're just going to base it, I'm going to do it on the white because it shows up a little bit better. On the wrong side of your fabric, you're going to draw around your template. Now what I will say to you, when you're drawing around your template, these sewn line markers are brilliant because they've got a very fine pencil on there. Um, angle your pen towards the template. The thing is, every time you draw around a template, you're adding a little bit. So if you can minimise that extra add onto there, you're going to get a slightly more accurate finish. Two peaks in one. Yeah. Two peaks in one. Two uh, peaks the, in that's one. The that's the, the creative, creative grid. grid. Yeah. Two peaks in one. That's yeah. it. When we did a workshop with this, with Chris and Barbara, we called it peaky and spiky. <laughs> nice i'll get emma to tag it so if anybody wants the creative grids version so just transferring it over following the lines round and um you can cut it. i i cut mine with scissors I, w I will say that but if you wanted to there's nothing to stop you cutting it with your rotary cutter just line your rotary cutter up with the lines you've drawn and cut it down that's going to give that's going to give you everything you know that's going to give you your accuracy again I'll put my glasses on it would help if I could see what I'm doing 
Oh, I nearly went into the opticians yesterday, Jane, when I took the cat to the vet. Nearly. nearly. It's right next door to the vets, and I thought, no, it's not. Because obviously I'm still in denial about needing glasses. Um, but I thought I really should go and get them tested. And, um, yeah. Yeah, well, it, it does help you in the long run. You know. <laughs> and then I thought it wasn't fair to leave HP in the car while I no, wandered bless off. No, How is she? Um, she's avoiding me today. I'm not surprised. <laughs> They don't she like does not go love into me. the vets, do they? Nope. Nope. So I've just cut that round um, and I'll take the scissors and I'll just cut those little notches off there. You end up with lots of little bits everywhere, but you know. That's all right. That's you really can't do anything with these pieces. And as much as you try, you can't. <laughs> well, the little tiddly widdly bits. Yeah. Well, well, actually, get used actually to there is a technique that you can do called confetti quilting, but we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> Hang on, what now? <laughs> There's always something. You can use every little scrap. So you've got your triangles there, and you'll do the same with the blue, and you will cut 16 of your C triangle, and you can go up and down like that, and you can cut 16 of your B or C, yeah, B and C. So you'll do 16 of each of those and then you've got everything together for that block. I think the thing with templates is they're, they're, we've all got so used to quick piecing with rotary cutters and rulers yeah. that we think template plastic is a little bit like, oh, this is a bit slow. But it's actually, okay. it's the sort of thing that once you've got your template, you can make so many different things with that block, that that unit there. You know, turn it the other way around and have a look at it. Put two together facing each other. If I just put them out here, look, if we put two together, you get this elongated diamond shape as well. Ooh, it's which the is, hidden thing yeah, that it's, I love. You know, putting two blocks together like that gives you another another dimension to that unit put the dark in the middle with the light on the outside that gives you a different you know it's one of those units that you think well it's a bit but then once you start playing with it you get all sorts of shapes and things going on so it's really nice and I quite like templates and I quite like hand sewing as well so I've sort of I started my patchwork when I first started patchwork rotary cutters were a quite a new thing and we were still cutting with templates and rulers and and things like that so I'm sort of a bit like um, imperial and digital I was just there in the middle so I can do either or it it works both ways for me so I'm a bit like that with templates I love them as well so that's the template <coughs> side of it so when we're joining these units together we're going to sew the one side, let me have a look at these templates, because obviously when you put these down, they'll be the other way. So that's template B and that's template C, because you're drawing on the opposite side. Sorry, that's wrong. That's C and that's B. It doesn't matter because you can see how they go together. You've got your triangle there and one goes one side and one goes the other. It's very easy when you're putting them together to look at your triangle and think, oh, right, yeah, I'm matching up the, the long edge there with that edge well that gives you a completely different shape that's quite good fun but it's not the shape you want so just make sure that you've got them now Anne is worried because she doesn't have any in her kit we didn't send it out Anne, because uh, like we say anybody that did the last block of the month already has this template and already has this template plastic the, tem the template should be in the in the pat on the back of the pattern no she said the template plastic no, is it's not missing. in the kit we didn't send it out in the kit we didn't send it out in the kit because um you, if you if you did last an additional block cost of the month. really and, and if you've done all, have done the block already from last time then you'll have the templates anyway. And also, you know, some people want to use their creative grid. Not everybody wants to use the template plastic. So we give you different options. And if you want the template plastic, it's all on the website. And if you want it with the pen that Jane is recommending, because like we couldn't send out template plastic and pens. No, so and it just it's adds there, to it's, the cost of everything, yeah. doesn't it? And it's not everybody needs template plastic. Some people will have it in their stash. You know, it's 
So the block of the month was always to be... That's the only block that you're going to need additional... Anything for. For. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everything else should be just the fabric and the pattern. So take your triangle and line up. You've got your little notches there. Line them up. And that's your the notch works out, it's your quarter of an inch seam allowance. And you can chain piece these. So if you do all of the one side pieces together. You can put them all together. You can pin them if you feel that you need to pin them. Because you know what I'm like, I don't pin anything. <laughs> but Pinning! If you feel that, you know, you feel happier if you want to pin it, pin it. You know, there's no, there's no problem. And as I said, don't worry that when you put it on there, you think, oh, is that supposed to line up there? No, it's not. So, you know, we're so used to everything being the same shape. We start with squares and everything that it all lines up. That sometimes when we use an irregular shape, we're a bit like, oh, that's not lining up. It doesn't need to. It'll all come together. It's like magic at the end. It all comes together. Yeah, it's just having a little moment. It does it sometimes. It just kicks it off slightly and then you have to go back and just go back over it. <coughs> right, so a lot of people asking about this. So to reiterate, if you did the block of the month from the last quilt we made, you already have this template plastic, you don't need any more. You already have it. If you kept your templates and you kept your template plastic, you've already got it and you are good to go. Um, if you have got the two peaks in one ruler, you can use that. Um, what is the finish size block? It will be... It'll be finish size four inches. But four and a half, the, the block itself is 12. All our blocks in this quilt are 12 inches finished. There you go. There you um. go. And, um, yeah, there you go. Or if you don't want to buy any more template plastic, make it out of your cereal pack. There you go. Yeah. So we, ha we have options this is on it. all fronts. And the other thing is that Natasha's printed this, this pattern on beautiful thick paper. Now this paper is thick enough for you just to cut that out and draw around it. It's, um, you know, if you don't want to use template plastic and you don't want to stick it onto cardboard, you will get away with using that for your blocks it will it'll work just take your time going around it because obviously the more you go around it the it'll move slightly but it's feasible so you're going to press these and we're pressing them so that the seam falls underneath the blue the small triangle just so that it doesn't show through on the white so to the dark side to the dark side we like to go to the dark side I have um, best press starched, um, flattered the fabric beforehand, before I started doing anything else. Oh yeah, so we've used best press. We were talking about flat, weren't we? Whether or not that was something that people would be interested in. I don't really know what it is. You were trying to tell me, weren't you, what it was? Oh, we were talking about soak, weren't we? Yeah, that's soak a, and that's flatter a, and that Soak brand. is for you when you're washing yarns and, and also your fabric because it's got I think it's got special things in it that keep the fibres. <laughs> it I don't, you see the thing for me, I'm a lazy quilter. I don't wash anything. <laughs> I know this be, it, it causes a big stir when people ask the question on the, do we wash our fabric before we start? Yes, if you want to. You don't have to. Some people prefer to. There's no rules. There's no law. Um, I just want to get on and sew, so I just cut my fabric out. Um, soak has got is is kind to fibres, particularly particularly knitting. 
I think it's designed for the knitting world, but I think we've, us patchworkers, because we do this, we filch stuff from other crafts. <laughs> um, we found it works really nicely, and I think it's one of those that smells nice as well. Um, flatter is like Best Press. It's um, a non-starch based um, fabric spray that conditions your fabric and gives it a better flatter um, finish, you know, like starch. Uh, now you see Susan, she said um, she's found her two peaks in one, but until then she used copy paper to trace and then stuck it onto cardboard and cut out around there. It's whatever suits. It is. We've all got ways. We'll have been to our quilt guild, patchwork group, whatever we do, and somebody will have given you a little tip and you're like, ooh, that's clever. And we've all learned different ways of doing things. Absolutely. Margaret says, um, she knows you said before, but what thread are you using? I'm just using a neutral coloured thread. I like Aurifil 50 or Mechler 60. It's the finest one. Um, when I'm piecing, I use the finest, well, not the finest, because I know Aurifil do a, an 80, don't they, for a plique. Um, a 50 or a 60 is good because it's, um, it's nice and fine. Fine doesn't mean weak. Fine means that it's 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 just thinner, and it gives a lovely flat seam. That's that's the thing, isn't it? So we might look at doing metal threads. Um, I know because you like it. I'm a big fan of metal threads. Yeah, we. I mean, I love. I don't don't get me wrong. I love my orofil as well, but I just like metal. Well, I think having the option isn't bad because. Orophil has been quite tricky to get hold of. Um, well, of course, in this th 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 because at the of, moment, yeah. it's difficult, isn't it, with shipping and stuff? And um, yeah, they they just they shut for so long when um, the virus hit Italy. Yeah, this is the and thing, that's and it? so that's the thing. It's starting to come out now. In fact, I've got I've just had a delivery of some to send out to people. So if you are waiting for your Orophil, it's every bit likely that's in it's in my to do list today to do. My to-do list to do today. <laughs> to do, to do today. <laughs> to do, do, do. Oh, oh, so oh by hello, Laurie's joined us. Morning, Laurie Hi, and Christine. Laurie. Hello, hello. Um, by joining the notches again at the top, lying them flat, you get this lovely matching. It's your quarter of an inch seam allowance. So don't panic and think, oh, no, it's not me. It's no, there's no peak at the t very top. You don't want it at the very top. You need your seam allowance. So you've got your four peakies. Peak triangles, units there, they go there. The next part is this middle part. Now, it's a four patch unit. I think we've done four patch units before. Um, you'll get two strips of your fabric. This is G and A. How do you remember which one's which? <laughs> burned into my brain <laughs> writing the, the pattern I don't know how many times and ordering it and writing it out. Width of strip fabric, um, two and a half inch wide strips sewn together, press the seam towards the dark, the G fabric, the blue, so it doesn't show through. And then we're going to just straighten off the one end. Do you want a stripology for it, Jane? Well, you could use the stripology, that would be perfect. It's just down by your feet behind it's you. It's down here. See it. Well, no. there's, and there's the little idly biddly tiny one if you want as yeah. well. We can use the stripology, it's perfect for this. Perfect they, for cutting your two and a half inch strips to start with. And then we want two and a half inch units. We can line up one of the lines across here with that seam. I would always say to you when you're cutting, whether you're cutting with your ruler or with your stripology, Line up one of your straight lines with the seam line. That's the straighter line because for the best will in the world, sometimes it stretches a little bit and it's a bit wobbly on the outside edges. So just line it up with your seam line. And then we're going to cut it into two and a half inch units. Just do that one there just to make sure I've got a straight edge to start. That's following the squares. On yeah. this ruler, it's every two and a half inches is a square. Every it's inch square. and a half is a star on the bottom. It's so useful. These will be back in stock hopefully mid October. Um, everyone's gone crazy for them again. They're just they make life easy, don't they? We yeah. love making life easy. 
and you'll work your way down your strip into two and a half inches. From your width of fabric, I think you can get 16 two and a half inches. So that would make your eight, um, your four middle units, because once you've got these cut, you take two and you turn one around 180 degrees so that they're facing the opposite way. And your seams will nest, won't they? Yeah, because we've pressed them all to the one side, to the blue, when we place them together, and can we get a close-up of this one? Uh, yep, 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 yep. When of we course, put them together. Course. There you go. They're all ready I for you. See the <laughs> Sneak it in. in. You can see that that seam goes that way and that one goes that way. So when you sew them, they'll nest lovely and flat together. And again, you'll have all your... You've got to make four of these, so you'll need um, eight altogether. Is that right? Yeah, two, four, yeah, eight. So you can <laughs> chain piece these. <laughs> maths! Helps maths! <laughs> maths and patchwork, yay! Um, I'm just really pleased that you can't do maths and quilt and talk at the same time, because yeah. I always suddenly feel Suddenly really you, like, doubt yourself, don't you? You, like, because talk about this all the time, and then suddenly you have to say it, and you're like, is that right? Well, and also because you're doing other stuff at the same time. That's the thing. And I've done this so many times on Ho Chanda or things like that. And then, of course, people know I used to teach maths, so it's even more embarrassing <laughs> that simple maths just goes straight out the window. It's like I, I can't listen to directors, producers, listen to the presenter if I'm guesting or whatever, and do I maths. I was always fascinated with the presenters and the, the producer and that chatting and... I spent um, a few hours in the producer's box, if you yeah. like, for want of yeah, a better yeah. word. And they chat about everything. Not everything. what's going on with the programme. No. Everything. What they did on for supper, yep. where they're going tomorrow, and all of this. And I'm like, oh my goodness. I was admiring before, because I knew that they were saying, right, we're going to camera two or whatever. But when you've got to filter out all the other yep. conversation... Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So yesterday Elizabeth was laughing at me. She sent in a joke about the rabbits um, and um, and she was just saying, yeah, she said, I know that a lot of the jokes that she used to send into sewing quarter just sort of went over my head. And it's like, it's not that. It's that sometimes you've got so many other things you're thinking yeah, you about. Yeah, you can't even think about So yeah, it. I guess, yeah, they did go over my head because I was thinking <laughs> so many other things. It's hard. They you reckon would... it is the hardest job in TV. I think it must be. Because, because live TV, which is I would spend a lot of time going <laughs> because I'd be listening to what they were saying. <laughs> just looking like you're having an absence. Yeah. It's just what's happening. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I would use an unpick for this, but I don't know what I've done with it. So I'm unpicking those two stitches, there might be two, there might be one, just up to this seam that we've just sewn along there. And you'll be thinking, why are you doing that? Are we gonna, are we gonna close up this in a second? Yeah, shall we go? Yeah, 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 go on then. So I'm just unpicking, there's two stitches on this bit of there. Oh yeah, camera those two, Jane. Two seams, <laughs> that one going across there. So it's not the seam that you've just sewn, it's the one that you sewed when you were joining the strips together. The idly biddly one. Yeah, so it's yeah. just that gap up to that seam. And this is so, when we press this, we're going to press it to one side. Now, if I left it like that, that would be fine, because with the pressing mat, it gives you a lovely flat seam anyway. But when you touch, put your finger on there, there's, it's quite lumpy, because you've got quite a lot of fabric all in one place. So if you turn that over, because we've unpicked it, we can push the one seam up and the other seam down. And that now gives us, in this point here, a, a flatter seam. So when you're coming to quilt it, you've got less fabric to, to sew through. That? So if I just put that there. Do you know what? I have a problem that. with this, Jane. Up and down. I have a problem with the fact that it looks so pretty and no one's going to see it. Yes. Well, yeah. But then I sp I, yeah, I suppose so, yes. It's <laughs> like one of those things, isn't it? I, you get great satisfaction from that, how the I back know. of your quilt looks as well as the front, and then but you think, when well, I, nobody's yeah. going to see it. It is. It's one of those things that when it goes right and it looks like the perfect Battenberg yes. on the back, I'm like, this is amazing. Or maybe I just like Battenberg too well, much. Well, yes, it's my favourite cake, Battenberg. Can you still get it? 
Yeah. It used to be a Sunday afternoon sat you in front Bake of... Off. I suppose you don't get time, do you? Because no. you're so busy, busy person. But they did Battenberg the first did they? week. It used yeah. to be crumpets with cheese, melted cheese on top, oh. Battenberg cake, cup of tea, and my dad used to watch Ski Sunday oh. uh, before the Ruth Rendell mysteries. <laughs> Isn't it when funny? Because it was like... I like I like crumpets. Mum hates crumpets, but we really? had them quite a lot as a child, which fascinates me because she's like, oh no, I don't like them. Oh, why did um, she buy them then? I think maybe because my dad liked them, possibly. Oh, uh, okay. You know, oh, the things we do. Do for our men. Oh, um, um, Karen says that colour looks great on you, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yes, crumpets and Doctor Who in my head. Oh, Doctor Who, yeah, see, I was always too scared of Doctor Who. Yeah. I tried it as a small child and hid behind the sofa and that was it. I love Doctor Who. I love the new series as well. I love it. Right, so corners now. These are half square triangles. And I, we, we know, I think we know about half square triangles. We've got two squares, um, four and seven eighths of an inch square. So all the measurements and everything are in your pattern. Um, draw a line through the middle of the pail, the fabric A, from the middle out. Sew line pens, pencils are lovely because it's a lovely soft lead and it doesn't drag. But even, you know, you're going to, because you're going through the bias, you're still going to stretch it. So take your time, be gentle. You don't have to press down too hard. From the middle out, line through the bows of them. And then we're going to sew on quarter of an inch either side of this line but we're going to put them right sides together with the corner fabric now this is what i'm going to say about block two just remember because this is fabric c fabric c you had a big piece in fabric one in block one i'm just googling karen says crumpets it's just weird <laughs> I think that my mum think as it says it's like but I just, slightly oh strange God. texture. Yes. Don't know how that happens. Anyway, sorry, carry yeah. on. <laughs> so fabric C. In your block two, you will not have a piece of fabric C because you had enough left over in fab in block one for fabric C. We've had a little problem with um fabric, haven't we, coming and stuff, and so we did enough fabric with one so that there'd be enough for block one and two. Yeah just because we were worried that block that the fabric wouldn't come in time for block two and i'm glad we did it because it hasn't come in time so um fabric c there was enough in your kit with block one to do your fabric for block two and it says here fabric c use remainder fabric from block one but it also says you need a long eight so if you're just got the pattern you might wonder what that's all about but it makes sense if you've got the kits. I we don't want people say, to, we... to open their kit and think, hang on, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> Why haven't I got a fabric? So Jane, I've just had an idea yeah. because we said to everyone that they should really put um, the block of the month with all the fabric into a box or something, didn't we? Yes. Do you know what I think we should make? A box to go a in. A block keeper. Oh, that's a good idea. And then if I've got any of that template plastic left over, we can make a zip pouch at the back to put any leftover fabric in so that you've got it there and it doesn't get accidentally swept in with the rest of your stash. That sounds like that a really good idea. All right. There we go. Job done. Yeah. So I'm just saying quarter of an inch either side of the line. You can chain piece these as well. You can do, go down all of one side and then go down all of the other side. So Elizabeth is saying, my funny shaped fist scars, can she use that in the Stripology ruler? And the answer is yes. The one that I always say has power mode, that one. Oh yes. I don't know where it is. It might be in my thread box. Or I might have taken it to Ochanda. I don't think I gave it to you this morning because we changed a blade, didn't we? Oh yes, I was going to show you, wasn't I? I had to change the blade. Because um, quite often people will um, 
carry on using their rotary cutter and it's quite dull and it's not safe really because the harder you have to press the more likely you are to go off and cut yourself so I would say change your if you're doing a big quilt like this change your blade before you start because I tend to change mine after I've, particularly after I've done a big project after every project mm. um, I wouldn't change it after I've done the cushion that cushion looks great Jane it's gorgeous it looks great um, but yes You'll be surprised how you've been struggling with your rotary cutter blade. I don't know why I leave it so long. It's like changing the needle in my machine, but yeah. I am getting better at that. I change my needle every project, regardless whether it's a small project or a big one. But do you? I, I do know God, that needles are a little bit hard to come by at the moment. Again, it's this chipping issue. So Shall I get us some needles then, some it might, nice quilting needles? It, it might be worth having some in okay. stock for people right. because I'll do that. they are difficult to get, to get hold of. So your rotary cutter, everybody's got a different rotary cutter. Some are easier than others. Some, there's some Alpha brands that you just pull it down at the back. It's just got a, a clicky switch, you pull it down at the back and that. So when you're changing your blade, you'll have a, generally you'll have a, a nut, thing at the side so take that off you can see I'm holding my finger against it this side that's to stop anything moving so take your nut off put it on your mat you'll have a washer take that off have a look which way round it's facing and put it down that way on your mat oh I'm glad you do this as well just like yeah. layer it up in layer the right it out way. and then you won't rem and then you'll have an, a, a nut or a screw or something take that out and put that down on the side. Now this one, the blade will fall out so you don't even have to touch it. Some of them you'll have to lift it. Now, when you're lifting it out, um, you could use a magnet. If you've got a little magnet, you could well, use that. Got, and we've some, got the, some of the um, sharpener, the blade sharpeners, they come with a magnet. They've got a little magnet, but we've also got the magnets um, with the telescopic handle on. Oh, they're perfect, So you yeah. can use those. Just use that, just lift it out. It's still going to be sharp, is what I'm trying to yeah. say, so just be careful. Now, you can put that to one side and use it for your paper if you wanted to. Um, I've I, got, have, I have a special paper I have one. a separate rotary cutter with a, a paper, paper rotary cutter. Now, Jane, what I did, when I, when I bought new blades to put on the website, I bought them in a pack like that because mm -hmm. I find that they are safer than having the ones just in a cardboard packet with a bit of plastic over the top, yeah. shrink wrapped over the top. And the thing and is... And I label one side old and one side new. Yeah. And I put the old in what one I side. What I do is I've got a Sharpie pen. Let me just put that down out of the way. Sharpie pen and I just... Then I know. Yeah. It's a dull blade and you can put it... I've actually got two of the because obviously I have lots I've had lots of packs in the past so I've got one that's got used in so it just goes into a used yeah one and I've got one that's new yeah I have but it's in the is in the cupboard behind you yeah um Karen you, says that she needs a new blade for her power mode Fiskars rotary cutter but can't seem to find them Karen they're just universal they're I was the universal say the ones. universal blades are yeah um, Fiskars blades will fit all of their cutters yeah but then but also all these ones that we've got on the website do as well. And I also got hold of the Alpha Super Duper li Long Life ones. Now they're a little bit more expensive. I think they're like nine quid for a blade, but they're meant to last at least double the length of a they normally do. one. They do last longer. They're, they're um, was it tungsten steel or something? It's like something that. Super Duper. It's, yeah, they've got stuff. a longer life, but Yes, they've got a longer life and they'll last longer, but they won't last any longer if you cut over a pin because you'll get a nick in it then and then that's, you wrecked your blade. So, yes, they will last longer, but like any blade, if you don't be careful with it. Oh, there you go. Elaine says that she, she's going to try the titanium blades. They're excellent. They are. Um, more power for my granny hands. Or gammy hands. <laughs> gammy granny hands. Like, <laughs> granny hands? Is that a thing? Um, <laughs> But yeah, so we've now stopped, we're now stocking those on the website. So if you want them from us, then great. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, change your blade, be careful, do it gently, slowly, take your time, do it when the children aren't around. 
to distract you or want to help. So we've sewn quarter of an inch either side of that square and we're cutting along that marked line. Lining it up. I'm just cutting across. And we're going to press that so the seam is on underneath the turquoise fabric C. Claire said that she went mad on crumpets when she was pregnant. <laughs> she said I put on so much weight because of them delicious with loads of butter. Oh, well, I think it's the butter though, isn't it, really? Oh, I love butter. And the cheese. Do you know, we'll have them with baked beans and then melted cheese on top. Oh, really? Yeah. You see, cheese, I think because I grew up having cheese, um, I think Karen just said that um, she puts jam on hers. That mm. feels alien to me because we were always, it was always, oh, always. I that one. Oh. <laughs> It's gonna help, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. Should we do that? Threaded. Oh yeah, Susan says she likes the idea of marking it. So if you get one of the marker pens that you can mark your template plastic with, if you've gone for yeah, that, that bundle, would work, then yeah. that will also work. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So foot down. Remember, Jane, the foot needs to be down before, I've otherwise it, it yeah. won't. It's done it. It's done it the first time. Yay! Oh, is it? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah, Susan's off to change her blade. I mean, you can wait till the end of the show. Yeah, it'll be <laughs> nice know, if you can't go watching for a bit longer, Susan. You've Come inspired back. her. <laughs> <laughs> like, she can't finish off the rest of her block, but she's got a sharp blade. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. No, I would, I would recommend it. And, and you'll be amazed and you'll think, oh, why didn't I change this earlier? And I know they're not, they're not actually, well, I don't know, just about a fiver, aren't they, for a new blade? the time it will save you and the energy and the safety. There's a safety aspect, I think, that for me, yeah. more than anything. You've got a dull blade, you're pressing down harder to get through. You're more likely to go off when you're pressing down harder. So you've got the corners units now. These are the half square triangles that go in to the corners like so. Oh, it's so pretty. So that's the style for those. Nice. Um, we're going to sew it together in the rows of three and then throw the, sew the rows together. Um, when you line this up, you haven't got seams to nestle, but the point of that triangle there will nestle against the point of that one. It won't nestle nestle, but you'll know you're in the right place when the points meet just at the top there. Now, you see, um, Elizabeth even keeps her needles in a tiny tin to take for recycling. I keep mine in a tic-tac tin. The little plastic tic-tac. Yes. I mean, it was a great excuse to just eat the tic-tacs, tic to be fair, yeah. but it just works. I've got a cement tin for mine. Oh, do you? Um, one of my ladies, her husband's diabetic, so she uses his sharp box. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, that's, that's sensible. <laughs> Ginny says that her hubby insists on changing her blade. Doesn't like the sight of blood. <laughs> Don't blame him. <laughs> I mean, uh, it sounds like you've got form there, Ginny. That that does suggest accidents have happened. And Pam just wants crumpets with cheese and beans now. Yes, this is it, isn't it? And Helen so, has hers with honey. Yeah. We're, we're I like honey on mine as well. Not yeah. with cheese and beans. Not with cheese and no, beans. Okay. So on our triangle unit, can we go on a close-up on Yeah, this? I'm there. I'm all over it. Cool. Camera two. You can see that we've got here, we've got like a little cross there. If you can, when you do your seam, if you can keep your seam line when we go at joining the pieces together just above that cross, that means you won't lose the point of your triangle. When we join the, um, the triangle unit to the four patch unit, if you hold it up to the light, I don't know if we'll get that on a... Might just, oh yes, you can see it you'll see the, the, the seam of the fabric there. So just make sure, I mean, they should line up perfectly anyway, but we know what we're like with our seams. Sometimes they just go off slightly. So just make sure that seam there, you'll see it there, is lined up with the middle of that point. That'll make it look nicer. Sometimes when your seams don't quite line up, that's what your eye sees and it just sends it off slightly and you'll just keep noticing it. So. Even if it, when you put them together, there's 
one goes over the edge slightly on the one side better that that, that, that there are the seams are lined up in the middle. Now Jane, yes. one Kate Fenton has just joined us. Would that be your mum? That would be my mum. Hi like, mum. <laughs> crumpets. <laughs> crumpets. She's missed the whole crumpet debate. Oh no. Oh, Kate. <laughs> oh. I'm giving your secrets away, Mum. <laughs> so on this side, I press the seam towards the, the half square triangle, not the dog hairs, towards the um, half square triangle. On this one, I've pressed it towards the four patch, okay. just because when we come to join them together, again, it's another way for nesting your seams and making your rows all come together. Yeah, we do get a bit het up, don't we, about having nesting seams and everything mm. matching in this. I do quite like... Um, I think it helps, you know, nesting seams and things like that just yeah. help with your accuracy. It's not the end of the world if your seams don't nest. It's just one of those little tricks, hints, tips that helps when you're putting your sewing together. <laughs> I'm just giggling because Claire said that she didn't know. Claire, am I right in thinking that you were originally from France? So I think French is, I, I, I'm assuming, I'm making a big assumption, tell me if I'm wrong, that French is your, is your mother tongue. But um, she, <laughs> she, she said, I don't know what crumpets are. No, she didn't know that crumpet was a slang word for women. Um, but it's not yes. just any woman. It's like, you know, a bit of crumpet. A yeah, little bit of a... <laughs> going back to your 70s to our 70s inappropriate absolutely so she had a very embarrassing moment at work <laughs> <laughs> yes especially if you love a bit of crumpet yeah in your pregnant state oh, i mean gosh yeah yeah, yeah you can't see. get enough crumpet yes. <laughs> um helen wants to know what weight the multi-pack of threads is is that the polyester multi-pack um because i will have to have a look i would I don't know if it says on it. It might Does say, it say on, on some it? of them. They're a, mi they're a mixed bag. It doesn't. They're like multi-purpose ones. Say, to my mind, it's a slightly thicker. It's a maybe a, a. Now you see, Metler do sixty, which is their finest, and then fifty, which is their every day, and they do a forty, which is a quilting thread. Yeah. I use sixty for my piecing and fifty for my quilting or even 40 sometimes. I'll even use 60 sometimes if I feel that way. I'm a bit of a rebel. <laughs> um, Gutterman, I think, is 50 is their fine, and, and um, Orofil, 50 is their finer, and 40 is their everyday thread. Right. So I would say that's a 40. Yeah. So it will be fine for piecing. But certainly that's the thread that I use for my pumpkins because it's a polyester, it's stronger than, stronger. A, than yeah. a cotton. It's not going to snap, is it? No. It, I didn't know you could get all nerdy about threads. And, um, it's like anything. The more you get into something, oh, the more you find out about it. Absolutely. It's like card makers, isn't it? I mean, you yeah. know, you can look at a piece of paper and you know what weight it is, don't you? <laughs> I'm such a card nerd, yeah. Yeah, the, that's one many of the first shows I did with you, is. and I said, "Oh, yeah, it was an English piece, paper piece." And I said, "Oh, it's quite thick card." And you went, "Yeah, it's all on twenty." And I went, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's like anything. The more you get into a hobby, the more in depth you get with it. The more you start to learn about the sundries that go with your project, right, and the effects they have on them. You know, when we first start sewing, a needle's a needle, isn't it? Yeah. We no, don't know absolutely. about a ballpoint needle or a stretch fabric needle or a jeans needle or all of those things. We just sew with what's in the machine, yeah. don't we? Yeah, and actually when I first started sewing again, I needed someone like you in my life. Instead, what I had was being very heavily pregnant in Trago Mills in Cornwall, trying to just standing looking slightly lost in the haberdashery department hoping that someone might ask if they could help me yes and instead all they did was say that they didn't want to see me again until i'd had my baby could i please not come back because i was 10 days overdue 
I How was rude! Ba- I was banned from Trago Mills. <laughs> they might have thought they had to give you a gift box if you gave birth in their shop. Yeah, but it turns out that the woman that did all the fabric cutting had been a trained midwife anyway. So, you know, I felt that was rude. Yeah, um, Claire says that we're half right. She's bilingual. Her dad was French slash English and insisted on sending the kids to a French school. And her mum's uh, and her mum's English comes, so her English comes from her mum, telly and English books. Oh. Where obviously she didn't watch anything about crumpets. <laughs> and your mum's been here all along. It's just the C word that drew her to speak. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, hello. She's got another embarrassing moment. Another embarrassing moment at work was when we had a barbecue. Boss asked for containers to pour the punch. I popped up. Mum has two jugs. <laughs> yes, don't you just love the English language? <laughs> You've got to love it. Um, <laughs> All our um, slang terms. Yeah, but why would you know? I mean, such an innocent thing to say. Yes. I mean... If it's, you'd have said your mum has great jugs, yeah. then um, you know you might be in a in another situation. Awkward situation. Now, what I'm doing with again pressing the seams is I'm pressing the seams towards the middle block again because it just lies flatter. You've got quite a lot of bulk here because you've got that seam going through there, and you've got all of that where the the points join on your triangle. So if you press it away, it lies flatter. And just be careful when you're putting them on, because if you saw me then, I looked at that like that. You have a different <laughs> block. <laughs> yes, Annette, it was Trago at Liscard. She just haven't been in ages. I used to love all the birds in the car park. They have lots of... Um, like exotic birds. I think people. I think the Cornish just go and dump like cockerels and stuff there. <laughs> they just they just wander around the now. car park. Just trying to think if they had peacocks as well. I can't remember, but I know they had quite a lot of quite a lot of birds. Oh, that's Eric scratching the door. He wants to come and join in. He does want to come. Do you know what? If I put the heater on, he can come in. It was so mind? funny earlier when he came through the door and Natasha said to him, no, go back. And he literally <laughs> went... He was like a oh, sulky okay teenager, then. wasn't he? He put his head down <laughs> and like, oh. And we were all... Inga and I went, oh, poor Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, I'm coming. Hello. Come on, you can come and say hello to everybody. Hey, Eric. Hey, dude. Look at this gorgeous boy. <laughs> Look at him. It's lovely. <laughs> hello. Like, can I help, Jane? Yes. <laughs> we'll have you drawing things. <laughs> He's like stuck his nose to my leg because he can smell my dog. It's like, mm, right, you Eric, smell nice. Can we just reverse you up? Don't take that with you. This vehicle is reversing. <laughs> Come on. So that's the block. Look, We're going to make four. You'll need to make four of those. You've got them north, south, east, west on this block that, against the centre block. Next time I think we're on block three here which is this one, so that's that. Um, this cushion. Oh, nobody said if they wanted instructions for that separately. You can see it's the, the triangle unit there. It's the same size, so it's four and a half, finished four. Four and a half inch squares in the corners, so instead of the half square triangles, we've just used a plain square. And I'll quickly show you how to do the quarter square triangle unit in the middle. I'm gonna do it in the blues, but it's um, the principle is the same. So quarter square triangles, when we, when we work out a quarter square triangle, whatever size we want finished, we add one and a quarter inch. Yeah, it's a, one of those funny yeah. quilting-y rules, isn't it? It's, um, it's just one of those things. Now this strip I've got here, this little bit of blue, let's have, what have we got here? We've got 
There's a lot of love for Eric going on. Yes, I can imagine. He's so gorgeous. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not gonna... going mad. There were peacocks at Trago. It's all good. This is going to be a little bit smaller than you would need for that. You would need a five. So you'd have to add on your... A five and a quarter inch square. I'm just, because I've, this is the piece of fabric I've got, mine's going to be a smaller square, but the principle is the same. Let's just straighten that piece. Oh, Joanna lost her 15-year-old dog on Sunday. She says, it's nice to see others. Same age as studio dog Arthur. That's oh, what yeah. he got we, to, wasn't it? We 15. do miss him. We do miss him. It's a bit empty, isn't it, without him? You get used to having somebody just behind you, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> because yeah. he was always... Just well, he um, was always two no, steps was like in, front. in front, wasn't he? He yeah. was always like just in front of you. He was always two steps in front, which used to drive him mad when he didn't know which direction we were going in. <laughs> And then he'd just be under your feet. The number of times that dog got trodden on by accident, just because he was so keen to be in front, yeah. always in front. And you couldn't put him on a lead because he just used to pull. So, but he was so well behaved, he never had to go on a lead. And I trained him to ride with me, not on the saddle, obviously, but no. he, he knew that as soon as he came to a break in the pavement, so he'd walk on the pavement and I'd hack in the road. And he knew that every time he came to a break in the pavement, he used to have to sit and wait would let all the buses and whatnot go past on the on the main coast road down near Brighton and Brilliant. then hack across over to the Downs. And he was just awesome. There is no way I could do that with any other dog, but sometimes you have a dog of a lifetime that you can just yeah, do that just, with. Yeah, just exactly what you want. And he was, that was, that was my smart, that was my Arthur. So I've done the two squares. There'll be five and a quarter for that cushion because it's, it's their four inch finished squares. Mm -hmm. um, two colors together. It's the dark yellow and the, and the bright yellow. So I think it's called sunshine and gold, is it? Or just yellow and gold. I don't know the fabrics. Um, line on the lighter fabric across the diagonal. We're going to sew quarter of an inch either side. So effectively, at this point, we're doing it like a half square triangle. Oh, Joanna said he'd been a grumpy old man, but it's very quiet without him. I think, you know, we all miss our grumpy old men when they're not around. Mm, definitely. So you're going to cut through the middle of that. So you've got two half square triangles. Press them to the darker colour fabric. This will, in, in effect, actually make two. Oh, nice. Quarter square triangles. So it's another quick way of doing. You're now going to place them right sides together, but you're going to have them in opposite directions. So you're lining up the seam, but you've got the dark fabric on top of the light and the light fabric on top of the dark. Nestle the seams up together. And then you're going to mark the diagonal on the opposite to the seam that you've just created. So just pencil mark across there. And again, you're going to sew a quarter of an inch either side of that line. Oh, I'm getting on with buttons confused. Sorry, everyone. I was just trying to reply to Annette. It's the June Taylor um, cutting mat, um, Annette, that we've got on the website. I've got all the stock of the big one, I think. Um, my suppliers are trying to get more, but again, guess where they've got to come from? America! <laughs> hey! But I do have one in the hall. Um, let me just see if I actually loaded it or if I completely forgot. And then we're going to cut th through that marked diagonal line. And there you go, you've got your quarter square triangle. There we go. I've just loaded that one cutting mat that I've got in the hall for you. Should you wish. Not everywhere stocks the big ones. No, and it's lovely to have the big sized one. And they tend to charge a lot more than I do for them as well. 
There you go, getting a bargain as well. And you can do the, the twiddly fiddly bit in the middle of, with this one as well. So you can unpick those um, two stitches or one stitch and a bit on either side. And once you've pressed your seam open, one will go one way and one will go the other way. So again, it gives you that lovely flat finish on your triangle. But that's how you make a quarter square triangle. And with this unit here, you can see that I've matched up the triangle. One, tri one or two of the triangles have got the dark gold on the either side. Yeah. And two have got the light gold. And so I've matched those colours up against the, the triangle in the middle and it gives you that arrow effect. And that's, that's basically, it's the same block, but you've got plain squares in the corners. Your triangle unit, you've got two with the dark gold and two with the light gold. And you've got a quarter square in the middle. I'll, um, I'll pop a photo of it. If, you, if, if you're going to do the instructions, great. I'm happy to do the instructions if people want them. It was just <coughs> another colourway and alternative. Because I know that there'll be people watching today that are not necessarily subscribed to the to the quilt because they're not yeah. ready to make a whole quilt yet but that's a an option there's no quilting on that it's just a patchwork you could quilt it if you wanted to you'd layer it up and do your quilting before you put the back and the binding on so yeah there we go that's block two hooray hooray not quite halfway there but we're getting there <laughs> yeah and how many of those do we have to make we have to make four of those okay yeah, there's four. There's, there was just one for the middle block. All the other blocks, apart oh, yeah, from this it. one, yeah. are fours. That one, I'm afraid we have to make eight. <laughs> Don't apologise, Jen. We do this for fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry, but it's... I know there's some of us out there that are like, oh, no, not this block again. Yeah, We like it's... instant and we don't... Some people don't like repetitive. I know that. But it's there because it's useful. Yeah, and it makes a beautiful end result. pattern. I mean, look at that end result. Makes a lovely pattern. Oh, gorgeous. Um, yeah, Jane would love a, um, a cushion pattern, please. Shall we do it as a download? Ooh. Ooh. Let's. Yeah. Well, um, you know what you're doing for the rest yeah. of the day. I'm going to get on my <laughs> laptop now. <laughs> Jane, thank you, thank you, thank it's you so much as ever. Um, so we will crack on with those instructions then. The fabric is already for sale. I think it's $9.99 for the fabric for the cushion, which bargain. is a bit of a bargain. Lots of you have gone for the earthy tones, which has got a bit of a discount on because, you know, I was feeling the love this morning. Um, and there's template plastic there's the new um super duper rotary blades rotary cutter blades and normal rotary cutter blades on the website there and have a look at the new patterns that are up for digital digital downloadery it's not, not even not a word to say is it but i'm going there um jane thank you so much you're very welcome and thank it's you a pleasure at home ever so much for watching and what else was i going to say i think i'm on her chanda tomorrow um, so come and say hello there if you fancy. Otherwise, we will be back bright and early on Monday. Yeah, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Yes, you will, with the, indeed the Catherine wheel. The Catherine and I've now got to go and source it in pinks and purples. Any other colour wishes, let me know. There we go. But that's the quilt. Why don't we make a cushion size one for the demo for next week yeah. in the pinks, in the purples, pinks so the that purples. you can see how it works up? Yeah. Does that sound fair? Sounds like a plan. We have a plan. We're all good. We have a plan. We're good. Um, thank you, everybody. You take care and lots of love. And we will see you next week. Goodbye. Bye-bye.